Thank you to the organisers for arranging this event and for inviting me to speak. I want to speak briefly on a perspective on 10 years after the Arab Spring and the increasing region-wide destabilisation role of Israel. While the so-called Arab Spring of 2011 did indeed energise some pro-democracy movements, its greatest regional significance was in marking the second phase of Washington's openly declared New Middle East plan to subjugate the entire region. These New Middle East wars in the last 20 years represent a cat catastrophic failure of the United Nations Security Council in its mandate to prevent war, as three of the five permanent members actively engage in this aggression. The greatest crime of the 21st century since several million have been killed and between 37 and 59 million displaced by the United States post 9-11 wars. The New Middle East wars planned in the late 20th century, enacted first in the October 2001 invasion of Afghanistan and announced in Israel in July 2006 by Condoleezza Rice, can be thought of in three phases. In the first phase, we see the Bush era invasions of Afghanistan, Iraq and Israel's invasion of Lebanon. In the second phase, the Obama era proxy wars using massive Al Qaeda, Al Nusra, ISIS, Daesh proxy armies against Libya, Syria and Yemen. And in the third phase, which I call the losing gambit, this is after Russia and Iran added direct counterweight in the theatres of war after September 2015. Now, in each of these phases, apartheid Israel played an increasing role in regional destabilisation well beyond Palestine. Because properly understood, Israel is not simply a European Jewish colony. It is an agency of the imperial power at the heart of the Middle East. If we review the Arab Spring of 2011, we can see that in Egypt, after a brief excursion into the sectarian Muslim Brotherhood regime, there was reversion to a status quo of a US-backed military regime. In the Persian Gulf, the Arab monarchies, the least democratic of all, there was no change at all. The Saudis helped crush an uprising in Bahrain. In Libya and Syria, the most progressive, inclusive and independent Arab states, the US, Israel, Qatar and the Saudis seized the opportunity to attack these most progressive states. In Iraq, Libya, Syria, Lebanon, Yemen, the US and its uh, allies recruited hundreds of thousands of international jihadists to attack the independent Arab states. In Tunisia, there were some reforms, but no revolution. In Yemen, the one genuine indigenous Arab revolution was mercilessly assailed by US-Saudi aggression. And in Palestine, the ethnic cleansing and massacres persisted while Israeli regime attacked much of the rest of the Arab region. So apartheid Israel in the new Middle East wars in the first two phases, even before the first two phases, in 1948, the creation of that European Jewish colony was recognised by even by the US State Department as inherently destabilising. So in this first stage, first and second stage of the new Middle East wars, Israel's annexations of Palestinian Syrian territories were widely denounced as also its invasions, ethnic cleansing and other crimes against the Palestinian populations. However, it tried to invade Lebanon and failed, and that invasion was covertly backed by the NATO states. Despite this, the resistance forced Israeli forces to exit both Gaza in 2005 and Lebanon in 2006. But the Netanyahu regime after 2009 expanded its ethnic cleansing of Palestine's West Bank with the tacit support of the NATO powers. The Zionist colony also supported jihadist terrorists in Syria, many of them without distinction, and made hundreds of direct strikes on Syria, obviously illegal, but encouraged by Washington and the NATO states. In the phase three, from late 2015 onwards, Israel expanded its destabilization to include illegal annexation of Jerusalem, other West Bank territories and the Syrian Jolan, direct attacks on so-called Iran-backed militia, Iraqi and Syrian uh, young men mostly fighting to defend their countries from the proxy army sent in by the NATO powers. And there were repeated provocations and threats of direct attacks on Iran continuing until today. There was more direct and open collaboration, so-called normalization with some of the Persian Gulf Arab monarchies like the UAE, including in military escalation sabotage of Iranian ships sending fuel to besiege Syria, more direct engagement in the war on Yemen, for example, by infiltrating Socotra Island at the uh, entrance to the Red Sea. And uh, on the other hand, Israel's murderous assaults on Gaza are finally being investigated by the ICC. So the future of Palestine and the West Asian region 
I think the escalating destabilization role of Israel in this losing gambit phase of the new Middle East wars has two explanations. One, from the colonies' point of view, it is alarmed and being, at being abandoned by Washington's soft retreat, including the likelihood of renewal of agreements with Iran, the major regional counterweight. From the imperial agency's point of view, it fears failure of those new Middle East wars, which instead of a region headed by Israel and the Saudis would see a region headed by a resistance axis um, led by Iran. The greatest obstacle to democracy in Palestine at the root of this conflict, the two-state myth perpetuated by both Israel and the Palestine Authority. Former Israeli leaders have admitted that when this myth falls, Israel will face an anti-apartheid campaign which it simply cannot win. So in summary, the Arab Spring was most significant in serving as a springboard for a second round of new Middle East wars, the proxy wars. The only real revolution that period was in Yemen, and that was immediately assailed by Washington and the Saudis. Apartheid Israel increased its regional destabilization role, especially in the third losing gambit of these new Middle East wars. Although that plan has failed, uh, the idea of a region dominated by the Washington's key agents, the unlovely apartheid Israel and the Saudis, the wars are far from over. I believe Washington wants to delay the final defeat of this new Middle East plan as long as possible.